break down barriers, these activists build walls. We get about 40 big trash bags full of post-consumer plastic that go into one eight-foot-long brick. Upcycling trash is just one of the ways that Todd Winward practices what he calls place-based Christianity. So we have barn raiser people who would hate the politics of these liberal hippies. But together we're doing good work and having campfires and eating good tamales together and working on and saying, look what we did with God's help. On Earth Day, Todd joined a multi-faith march calling on the state to grant legal personhood to the Rio Grande River. And I come here with a humble heart and some of my Christian brothers and sisters to dare to believe there's a second chance for Christianity. Throughout history, Christianity was often used to justify colonial expansion that drove indigenous peoples from their lands and that led to widespread ecological damage. Now, a new generation of Christians have made caring for the environment a sacred duty. So I hope that Christianity can wake up. Like I said, we're late for the party, but maybe we can add a spark that no one has yet. That's my prayer. So can this fresh take on Christianity grow into a mainstream movement? Some scholars have made the case that today's ecological problems are directly tied to Christianity. I think that Christianity can be good for the environment, not that it necessarily has been. Really a foundational article for environmental ethics in general made the case that Christianity is at the root of the ecological crisis. And there's others that have suggested that Christianity and in particular Protestantism is at the root of capitalism. The argument goes that over centuries, Christian Europe embraced science and technology as a means to understand and subdue the natural world. These advances allowed colonial powers to turn the entire planet into a marketplace. Capitalists found justification in Christian doctrine. Man is master over nature. This way of thinking led to the theft of lands from native peoples, chattel slavery, and the unsustainable depletion of natural resources. These are the original sins for which Todd seeks atonement. Ched Myers is the Christian theologian who coined the term watershed discipleship. The only place where bodies exist um, on this earth is in a watershed context. We all live in watershed. Myers says that the Bible offers a framework for how humans should live in relation to their environment. The idea that human beings are so out of balance that um, nature is turning toxic is actually goes back to the book of Exodus where <laughs> where in the plagues of Egypt, nature rises up against um, Pharaoh's empire in order to liberate uh, slaves, right? That's an ancient trope. And here we are again in this series of plagues, right? Extreme weather and pandemics and um, <clears throat> loss of fertility and species extinction. These are plagues which are, are the earth um, crying out to human beings to pay attention. Meyer's work has started to catch on within Christian theological circles. There's been a total burgeoning of interest in this at the scholarly level. It's really become almost like a growth industry within uh, our fields. Professor Rebecca Copeland teaches watershed discipleship to first year seminary students. With climate change, with mass extinctions, we're really facing a watershed moment leaders of the faith have acknowledged the urgency of environmental sustainability. The Pope, Archbishop of Canterbury, and the Patriarch of the Eastern Orthodox Church issued a joint statement at last year's International Climate Summit. But among parishioners, studies have shown that Christians in the pews are actually becoming less concerned about ecological issues. But their research also revealed that in these, in these congregations, most were not hearing anything about environmental issues from the pulpit, from their local faith leaders. And some want to change that. 
we haven't really educated people on the core values of what caring for God's creation means in their own lives. Mitchell Hescox founded the Evangelical Environmental Network in 1993. Among some evangelicals, protection of the environment has been a low priority. Our chief message is how pollution impacts the life of children, both born and unborn. And so helping people to see that things like asthma and autism and ADHD um, and severe allergies have definitive links to pollution, especially fossil fuel pollution. And Hescox says there's a lot that communities can do to make a difference. They can buy solar power, they can put their own solar power up, they can put wind power up, they can do community farms, they can do energy efficiency. That's what Todd did with this hacienda he fixed up in Taos. So I'm going to take you inside. This was a hand-built adobe built in the 30s. His community may be on the fringes of the church establishment, but he's trying to show others the potential of grassroots movements. I'd love to share possibilities with people, and so this is our post-petroleum palace out here. This is for those people who come to me and want to try to live differently. So we've got an outhouse, a composting toilet, a solar shower. We have what we call the salvage hermitage. It's a hermitage built of salvaged parts. And it was built by a man who has, who has both in, uh, been incarcerated and addicted. And the idea of repurposing our lives and repurposing parts, that's part of what we do here at Tilt. We believe everybody has a second chance. Todd's organization often works with people who have struggled with drugs. One of them is Daniel Rhino Herrera. I've uh, been in recovery now for seven years and uh, finally found a purpose in life and uh, realized that this is actually heaven on earth. So together we became unlikely compatriots, but we, yeah, we kind of have a bromance now and we kind of dig, dig doing anything together. Now, the pair is working together to expand this desert oasis and they've broken ground on another project in the nearby town of Cuesta. We have a 12 space mobile home trailer park that we're trying to turn into a transitional living center for sober living. And that has attracted a bunch of other Christians. They're like, what are you doing? I do really believe that Christianity is good for the environment. I mean, it keeps us grounded. It's good medicine. I mean, there's worse things that we could be doing with worse people. 